the, the stay in Rwanda has been excellent. Uh, firstly, I, I passed through Rwanda, if, you know, some years ago, and uh, it was not as developed as it is. And then um, um, that time, I think uh, my program was so tight that I couldn't. But when I arrived on uh, Friday, a Sunday, we did uh, a run, a marathon, 23 kilometers uh, of running and walking uh, through Kigali. So I saw a lot of places. Uh, we went to the museum. Um, we went to the old prison, 1930, uh, which was a huge and starting point of, uh, you know, a punitive, um, uh, you know, um, uh, part and uh, I've just forgotten the name of the prison um, but right you know um, in the middle of uh, Kigali and that's where our journey starts from that uh, most of the African countries uh, that were colonized by uh, you know um, the colonies like Britain, France, Belgium and uh, Germany um, had the uh, you know, uh, areas where people were incarcerated. Um, I'm sure when they, uh, they came in Rwanda, they found traditional courts where perpetrators were actually, you know, um, um, uh, brought and then uh, they, they, were, they were judged from there. Gachacha, right? Yeah, so that, when the Muzungu came, things changed, you, uh, you were to be locked, and so on. So the, the areas of um, punishment, the facilities for punishment were really hostile. And uh, that is the beginning. And then uh, we have moved through years. Uh, we've come through a process, I'm talking about Rwanda, a process of genocide and other offenses, and so on. But the transformation that we have seen in terms of correction is quite huge. Uh, the facilities that we have visited are showing the positivity of how a human being should be treated. In Zambia, our mission statement is that we are going to ensure that we keep the inmates in custody, in humane form, and uh, then provide them with industrial as well as agricultural skills, so that when they are released, after all, everyone who is going to be in the cells, <laughs> one day they will come out. And uh, even if they are sentenced to life, the president under the constitution in our country, I'm sure even here, has a right, constitutional right, to pardon anyone from, so they, they will be coming back. And so the aspect of, um, Corrections is really working here in terms of infrastructure uh, development. And one important thing that I've seen is that uh, the inmates themselves are able to build their infrastructure. And you could see, I think, when we went to uh, Rubavu, um, uh, Rubafu, uh, you know, correction facility, it's a massive structure. Then when we came to uh, yeah, again a massive structure built by the inmates and officers and their accommodation also built by these inmates. And then with the help of uh, the stakeholders, we've seen the improvement in the, uh, you know, industrial areas, the skills training uh, programs. Here they call it TEVET and uh, there we just call them workshops and so on. We could see uh, inmates being trained in, uh, you know, electrical power, domestic uh, construction of houses and, uh, you know, um, welding, uh, carpentry. Uh, I'm sure I didn't see tailoring, but there should be areas where they do tailoring. And then agriculture skills. Now, these skills are given to the inmates. And uh, once they graduate, they are given certificates, whose certificates they are going to use when they go out to say that they were not just eating in the facilities. 
and they were, you know, uh, given some skills which they can use for the purpose of them actually gaining a bit of uh, resources so that they do not reoffend. And then, uh, of much importance, what we saw in uh, Rubafu is uh, the biogas, uh, you know, uh, uh, creation or production using the waste product, the human waste product, and uh, then converting into gas, the gas which is used for cooking uh, food. And later on, the waste product is uh, again taken into agriculture. And so they are able to grow their own vegetables and uh, eat their own uh, you know, produce, which is, uh, I think, marvelous and uh, just uh, adds to uh, the you know, government revenue resource or does not constrain the budget that the government has. And uh, what we saw is that uh, the areas were so clean, despite the population. Yeah, you could not even get a scent from there. I mean a bad smell, a bad odor from, uh, you know, meaning that uh, the correctional service also is uh, involved in ensuring that they create an environment which is environmental friendly. And then when we went to the training school, the environment was excellent. The plantation there on the rocks and the, the, the area, I don't think COVID could uh, be in that area where, you know, fresh air is like an uh, excellent place. And we saw the learners in an environment which uh, was very conducive. And uh, that is where I think all the correctional uh, services are, are going uh, you know, that is the, the, the positive trajectory. Um, positive in the sense that uh, now we have moved from the 1930s where people were just punished, punished, locked up, to where now they are being corrected with four pillars of um, um, our, our operation. Number one, we need to ensure that the inmates are kept in custody. When they are brought, and incarcerated, we make sure there is security for them not to go out. And that is one. The second one is to start now the program of reformation so that if they committed an offense, we have what we, we, we make on our behavioral uh, you know, programs so that then they start reforming both mentally as well as uh, you know, socially and physically, and then we have now rehabilitation programs. Now rehabilitation programs are both psychological as well as physical rehabilitation, hands-on, uh, where now they are trained to do skills. And then they have, uh, you know, behavioral uh, group as well as individual uh, lessons to ensure that their minds are actually uh, brought back into real and the normal human beings that will contribute further to uh, being productive when they are released. And the last one is reintegration back in society. And my strongest appeal to my you know, colleagues, my uh, fellow citizens, um, of course back home and here in Rwanda, is to accept that the program that is offered by the correctional service is a reality and that the inmates that we are producing and become ex-inmates or ex-prisoners or ex-offenders have been, you know, refined. Not all may actually be refined. I always say out of a hundred, maybe one may also be a problem. So when such happens, please do not discourage the officers that are giving such, uh, you know, uh, lessons, such uh, training, they are doing their best. And uh, my strongest appeal to the good uh, leadership of His Excellency, the President uh, uh, General uh, Pokagame, is uh, to help our colleagues increase the numbers of uh, the officers. Because the international ratio of uh, an inmate to an officer is uh, four to one. So there should be four inmates to one uh, officer. 
but we know we don't have resources. So normally we were doing maybe one officer to closer to six or ten inmates. But the ratio here is quite huge. And that uh, results in, uh, you know, not giving uh, the inmates enough time to be rehabilitated so that when they go out, they are as unfinished <laughs> as they went in. So the main purpose of increasing the numbers is to ensure that uh, the thousands of inmates that are passing through the facilities are well trained, are well rehabilitated, so that then they'll make a big difference when they go out from the correctional facilities. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Without, uh, you know, getting a checklist yes. for the Mandela rules, uh, you know we are all <laughs> operating the Mandela rules. Yeah. I could check and just tick. Uh -huh. Is there good accommodation? Yes, yeah. they have. Yeah. Is there good food? Yes, yeah. I have. Yeah. Uh, is there water and uh, good sanitation? Yes, they have. Yeah. Are they going to the courts and being represented by, you know, uh, legal councils? Yes, they have. Yeah. And do they have good transport? Yes. Do they have uh, good beddings, uh, clothing? Yes, they have. Medical facilities? Yes, they have. So Rwanda is moving very fast and actually fulfilling the Mandela rules. And this is how it should be. The MOU is a quite a big milestone in how Rwanda and Zambia are going to cooperate um, in the correctional aspect. Zambia could have uh, strengths that Rwanda doesn't have. And Rwanda has strengths that uh, you know Zambia doesn't have. And so the exchange of such programs are very important. And so we have seen here, and all what I'll go and do is send experts to come and of course, you know, benchmark the biogas uh, production, the construction uh, of uh, the training school and other you know, facilities. And then the IT section of how Rwanda is managing. Mm -hmm. Then our colleagues can come and also see how we are faring, uh, mainly in agriculture. And uh, you, that is our strength, really, in agri. And the other areas, uh, maybe social, sports. Uh, the Zambian team is in the Super League. Uh, we have uh, the best uh, athletes in Zambia. We have the best uh, tennis player in Zambia. We have the best squash player in Zambia. We have, uh, you know, the, our volleyball team uh, is uh, actually in the Premier. The netball team is uh, the champions of Zambia. And so this is one area <laughs> Rwanda can come and learn that uh, we are doing actually very well. And um, we are actually recruiting experts in all the fields, um, those that have done skills, so that um, once they are trained as officers, not civilians, they will be able to train others and impart skills in the fellow officers as well as the inmates. The way forward is uh, how the way forward has been. <laughs> there is no turning back in ensuring that uh, the aspects of corrections are well done. We can define our own rules as Africa and countries that will actually uh, help the inmates, uh, you know, or the offenders or the prisoners to be good, good, good citizens. And the other aspect is that we should not let this big population just sit idle and eat and waiting to be released. Well, let's use this massive and uh, productive uh, human resource for the betterment of our countries in road construction, in agriculture, in industry, and in every aspect that you may think about. You can imagine taking an industry to Rubafu, uh, you know, uh, correctional center. You build massive processing industry. And that population, when they are released or they are, you know, 
um, they, they are opened, they are going in the industries to work as a, you know, uh, workers processing and doing that uh, at a cheap, 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 uh, you know, um, wage. So they will have an earning scheme that will pay them very little uh, Rwandan francs. And at the end of their sentence, they will have little resources to even send to their homes and support their children. So if they are able to support their children while incarcerated, the community that will be created, one, the children will be not on the streets because the parents, while they are saving their sentences, are able to pay for their school uh, fees. And so there will be no one to commit an offense. But because thousands are in, incarcerated, they've left the family members, they've left the children, they've left their wives. And for those who are incarcerated for life, their wives are doing prostitution. Their children are stealing because they know they have no hope. And so that is uh, what uh, you know should be done so that that big population is utilized for the better. And that is the way forward. So <laughs> there I'd say they, these are not very good sites, apparently. I know people that are able to explain what happened. They are trying to bring out, um, of course, they are trying to remove their emotions. But these areas are two emotional areas. And um, forgiveness is, div is divine. And uh, we can only say that uh, it's God who is going to help everyone of us. And so our energy, our efforts, and everything should just be in the hands of God for those who believe in God and Allah for those who believe in Allah uh, so that together as a country, um, you know, we can forge together. And the, the processes of healing should be a reality and not just on the word of mouth. And so when we pass through such a, a memorial, uh, you know, uh, or museum, where our thoughts are reminded of what happened. It's actually to be reminded actually to even forgive further uh, so that uh, we actually, you know, uh, look forward to a very united uh, um, a society. And above all, we learn to be patriotic so that we cannot speak heel of Rwanda when we are outside. So those who are outside, and are not patriotic about their country, it's high time that they learned that, uh, you know, being patriotic brings development in the whole country. And that is the appeal to every Rwanda, Rwandese who is outside and inside. Be patriotic. Don't sell your country. Never talk here about your country. Despite, there is no country that is perfect. Nothing is perfect on this world, on this earth. So we keep on improving, and we have seen tremendous development here, and we can only move on that developmental trajectory.